Today we have a right knee and we have the patella, femur, tibia, fibulas here. And so what I usually do in this to start the operation is I literally just draw out the patella with a sterile skin marker, draw out the tibial tubercle, and then I pick a point one third across the midpoint of the patella and then the point on the medial aspect of the tibial tubercle on the inside of the tibial tubercle and then just draw that line usually it ends up being somewhere around four inches and draw a couple of hash marks just so my PA can reapproximate the skin put it back well so then we make this incision usually we have a tourniquet up so there's very limited bleeding keep the incision fairly small don't do a lot of pinching of the skin edges just again for healing and trauma so oftentimes I'll just use one edge of my forcep to do that and then I only undermine up here because I'm going to keep my incision small but I'm going to gain a lot of exposure by just feeling the patella the inside aspect the medial border of the patella and then I come up and just create a little bit of space there and then what I'll do if we'll take those army navies and then I'll have my assistant come up and over and the vastus medialis, the medial quadricep, is right here. And so what you can do is just take a snip at a 45-degree angle up into the VMO and then down along the patella tendon, right beside the patella tendon. So we have a 45-degree, and you can see, if you look up in there, muscle fibers there, and that's vastus medialis muscle belly, and that'll heal really, really well. But what that does is it really creates a mobile patella so that I can end up having really good visualization. And so at this point, there's a fat pad behind the patella that we just resect for visualization. So here's our joint capsule. You can see the femur here. The patella is under here. The patellofemoral compartment is up there. We don't violate that. And at this point, I grab the front edge of the meniscus cartilage. You can come out with that. Stay right on the bone and reflect the meniscus and I stay down about one centimeter below the joint line. I try not to go too much before that and I come all the way around to the posterior medial corner right there. So I have a Z retractor and you can see easily the entire medial compartment I have excellent visibility and again with that little 45 degree snip into the VMO it allows the patella to be very mobile and you can move that and what we call this a mobile window the skin incision is small but i can move the the patella around typically i'll use a a z retractor and now we have access to the whole medial joint no problem at all okay so that's our exposure limited incision minimally invasive the first real step of the operation from a bony standpoint is resection of the tibia taking off the tibia at the top of the bone there. And so what we have is a tibial alignment guide, an extra medullary tibial alignment guide. Put one pin in just to make sure I'm in the midline. And you can see it's through a through the oblong hole that I can still go up and down. So once it's provisionally pinned and I have alignment in the AP plane parallel to the tibia and in the lateral plane parallel to the tibia, Arthrex has this wheel function to dial in your posterior slope. I've measured on the preoperative x-rays what that patient's unique slope is, and then I dial that to the patient's slope. And typically, it's somewhere around 8, 9, 10 degrees, so I'm just going to set this one on 9 degrees. Okay, so next is adjusting the height, and we're going to slip this stylus on, and I put it on the lowest portion of the tibia, of the worn surface of the tibia, and then I slide it onto the guide. So right now it's reading zero, and I can dial it down. I usually, four would be a minimal. If it's a tight knee, I usually use six, and so I would probably go with that at a six, and then pin that into place, fixing our height. Depending on the wear pattern of the patient would depend on how difficult it was to get appropriate height, but you don't want to keep coming back and taking more and more tibia. You don't want to take too much, but I found in a uni, because the space can be really tight, you need to take at least four, six. Our goal would be to fit an eight spacer block in. And then you want to put on a vertical capture guide. My goal is to align that where my saw is going to come just inside the medial femoral condyle there and just at the footprint of the ACL. The tendency is for it to be too far medial because you're fighting against the patella and your exposure isn't good enough. And so that's one mistake that I've seen and that I've done, but I've learned to bring it over lateral to where I can clear that wall of the 
from Wakanda. And that looks good. The first cut on the tibia is vertical, and there's a slot there for that. Again, I'm by the medial femoral condylar edge, and I'm at the footprint of the ACL. Come down there. This can then come off. I actually leave that pin in as a block for my saw, not to go too far laterally. All right, so I take this one pin out and then take a straight osteotome and I will lift that piece out and a coker perhaps. All right, and then I evaluate that for appropriate slope. You want just as much bone resection in the front as the back. And then as a check before I take the tibial alignment off, I have to at least, because the smallest polyethylene is a size eight, I at least have to get in a size eight spacer block. And if I cannot do that, then I'll actually go ahead and take more tibia. But I can get the eight in nice and easy. So at that point, I take all the pins out. And now our proximal tibia is resected. So then we are in extension. And since I had an eight inflection and I could get that eight in, but now I want to tense the MCL. I don't want this to be loose. And so usually if I've gotten an eight in, it'll be a 10 and I can slide that in and I can slide the distal femoral cutting block. So I have the 10 in, it's flush. We're in perfect extension. We don't want to be hyperextended and flex our femoral component. We don't want to be flexed either, but we want to fill up that space and tension the MCL. We can pop the handle off, put the distal femoral cutting block in place and a couple retractors. And you can see we'll be cutting through the slot for our distal femur. I'm going to pin that distal femoral cutting block into place with two pins. And then we're going to make that distal femoral cut. And there's our cut surface of the distal femur. And then we have our extension space. Uh, we're going to go back into flexion now and evaluate our flexion space and take our posterior femur. So we've done proximal tibia, distal femur, created an extension space, and now we're going to create the same exact amount of flexion space. Okay, so now we're back in flexion. We take our eight back, place that in the flexion space, and then we are going to take eight millimeters off of the posterior femoral condyle. That slides into place. Very important to make sure that we are flush with the cut surface of the femur. And we're going to pin that into place. So now we've taken our posterior condyle as well. Okay, so at this point, we will size our femur and I'm going to size maybe a size two. And we're going to place that on and really just check that we're on the inside wall, the lateral wall, the medial femoral condyle, the medial wall, and we have just a little bit of bone on each side. So a size two looks great. So we have it coming just on the lateral border of the medial femoral condyle and the medial border with just a little bit of bone on each side. It shows us a perfect size two. Then we're going to pin the finishing block into place. Very important to keep upward pressure since this pin's going down. A lot of times if you put this pin in first, it can actually push the cutting block away from you, creating a gap posteriorly. So you really want to check to make sure that is flush on your posterior femur. So the first thing with the finishing block in place, just to make sure we keep perfect rotation is I'll drill the what's called the lugs. First lug, second lug. So now I've set my rotation, so if there's any play, I know exactly where my component's going to go. And then our chamfer cut. Now at this point, my femur is completely finished. And at this point, I oftentimes will take the two trial, tamp it into place, and then check my balance just to make sure I don't have to repeat any steps. So good fit on my femur. And so I can slide the eight in. And what I like to have is about two fingers, you know, pulling tight versus an extension. When we come to extension, I want to open up probably two full millimeters 
which that does. That feels very, very good to me. So that's just an initial check and we'll go back into flexion. That's just an initial check that my balance is close. I'm heading in the right direction. I don't have, you know, an extreme one way or another. Coker, please. One of the things that does impact balance when you're testing like that is retractors in the knee, tensing the MCL. Two cokers, please. And then also the remnant of your medial meniscus. So at this point, I take the medial meniscus out. And I think it's very, very important to stay on the meniscus, not at its periphery where the MCL can come in and you can damage the MCL. And I think it's also very important. There's a little bit of redundant posterior capsule when you get right past the MCL that can impinge into the joint. And so I make sure as I'm taking the meniscus out that I actually remove that. Okay, so there's our meniscus. All right, femur's done. We're now gonna turn our attention to the tibia. So let me see a Z retractor. And what I like to do is to take the Z retractor, reflect any tissue away, because again, I wanna be on the posterior medial corner. I'm gonna externally rotate the tibia just a little bit. So now again, just through a small incision and adequate reflection back to the posterior medial corner, we have a nice view of our entire cut surface of our tibia. So now I'm gonna use a size two tibia. I'm gonna make sure that I place it at the very back corner and I'm gonna pin that into place, make sure it's flush. And the lug drill. So two lugs, one keel. Again, making sure it doesn't lift off. Sometimes with hard bone, it will lift off. You can hear a pitch change there, you know you're down. You can also check the laser mark to make sure that you're down. Take that out. Take your pin out. All right, so our tibia is finished. So I'll take the size two tibia and an impactor. Now our femur. Again, I don't use a lot of retraction because I want to be nice to the skin edges for healing. So usually I'm just using one Z retractor throughout the entire case. Impact the femur. Again, checking, making sure that we're flush everywhere. I do have a small osteophyte here on the medial femur that I don't want to leave there because I want to get good balance. So I'm going to make sure that's gone. So we're going to try with our eight poly. Now that went in nice and easy. I think probably too easy for my experience. So I'm gonna take that out and go to a nine. So we take the hook. And one of the technical pearls that I've learned is to take the rasp, if I'm going up in size, and make sure that I clear this wall here and make sure that our plastic isn't gonna hit there. And then if I've done that, I can take the nine, snap the nine in. So there's our two femur, two tibia, nine poly. There's our flexion. So at this point, we've chosen our trial components, two femur, two tibia, nine polyethylene, and we're gonna remove our trial parts, and we're going to put in our cement, wash very, very well, and then put in our uh, real components.